What's cracking? What's cracking? What's cracking? Back with some more reaction video content from the Johnny Arnett universe. This one, the top five one of a kind plays of all time. That is a lot of context. That is a lot to say as the as the content, the foundation for a sentence consisting of nine or ten words. That is a lot. How can you break down the top five one-of-a-kind plays of all time? There have been so many iconic and great plays over the decades and decades and decades and decades almost 80 years of NBA history. How can you boil it all down? How can you? This is, of course, Johnny Arnett's top five one-of-a-kind plays of all time. So I'm sure each and every one of us will probably have five unique different plays that we can talk about. I'm curious to see what Johnny Arnett has to say. Let's get into it. Very few sequences that happen in the NBA are completely brand new. At this point in time, the NBA is so deep and rich in its history that many incredible things have already happened time and time again. But this video is about the very few exceptions. Today, we're looking at the top five one-of-a-kind plays of all time. Sure, certain plays are rare and impressive, like Larry Bird's over-the-backboard shot. But even though we can acknowledge that it's rare, it's still been done several times throughout history. Okay. Kobe Bryant's done it, LeBron James has done it, Drew Holiday has done it, and even freaking Clint Capella has done it too. In order to make this list, it can't just be a rare occurrence, mm. but it has to be the only time it has ever taken place. Mm. Obviously, I'm just a basketball fan with a very finite understanding of the game's history. So if I mention a specific play and something has happened that's very similar to that play, then feel free to point it out in the comment section below and I'll educate myself on the matter. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number five, Kobe Bryant's left-handed three. Yes. Now I will admit, this first spot on the list is a bit shaky because it's very likely that some other player has done this before, but I'm just not aware of it. Essentially, Kobe hit one of the most ridiculously difficult shots of all time, which occurred in 2000. But bear, man, bear in mind, Kobe Bryant's a right-handed player. So he's shooting it three-point, basically fadeaway with the left hand. I think he spun into it too. With the shot clock expiring against Dallas. I'll shut up. Five and a regular season matchup against the Dallas Mavericks. Basically, Kobe was trapped in the corner with the shot clock winding down and he had very few options. So a desperate Mamba fired a spinning three-point shot with his non-dominant hand and buried it. To this day, I can't recall another player hitting a three-point shot with his non-dominant hand. Although, Steph Curry was extremely close when he made this and one play in 2021 against the Boston Celtics. It was initially credited as a three, but the replay revealed that Steph's foot was on the line, making Kobe to this day the only player I've ever seen do it. Number four, Rodney Rogers' nine points in nine seconds. One could argue that this is more of a sequence than a play, but regardless, I thought it would be cool to include on this list. Reggie Miller is famous for the time in the playoffs where he made a three-point shot, stole the ball, and then made another three-point shot to keep his Pacers in that playoff game. But in 1994, Rodney Rogers did him one better, and very few people know about it. It was a regular season matchup against the Utah Jazz, and late in the fourth quarter, the Denver Nuggets find themselves trailing by eight points. That's when Rodney Rogers and Robert Pack go on an insane run, where they continuously steal the ball, 
at Rodgers buries three separate three-point field goals in just the span of nine seconds, which gave his Nuggets the one-point lead. The excitement of the moment was quickly extinguished though, as the Jazz went on to make the game-winning jumper on the very next play. Despite the letdown, I'm pretty sure Rodgers can claim that he's the only player to make up an eight-point deficit in just nine seconds. Number three, the Trailblazers' eight-point play. On February 13th, 2019, the Golden State Warriors and the Portland Trailblazers were in a regular season matchup. With less than four minutes left in the fourth quarter, the Blazers had the lead, and the game was still within striking distance for Golden State. This is when Portland's big man, Zach Collins, attacks the basket and gets pummeled by Draymond Green. The refs decided that this was a flagrant foul on Green, so the Blazers were awarded two free throws. The head coach Steve Kerr doesn't like it and proceeded to absolutely lose his mind, resulting in him getting two technical fouls and being ejected from the game. Then, things really started to spiral for the Warriors when Draymond started complaining to the referee and gets hit with a technical foul. Now the Blazers are awarded their fourth and fifth technical free throws. Now remember, this is all over the course of one single possession. Portland maintains possession, inbounds the ball, and the Blazers' Jake Lehman hits a dagger three-point shot, making this an unprecedented eight-point play for Portland. Within the span of just a few seconds of the game's clock, the game went from being within striking distance to a complete and utter blowout. <laughs> Number two, J.R. Ryder's play of the decade. On December 22nd, 1994, the five and 18 Minnesota Timberwolves were up against the 12 and 10 Sacramento Kings. There was nothing particularly special about this matchup as neither of these squads would go on to make the playoffs. On this bad Timberwolves team was a player named Isaiah Ryder, who ball. had just won the NBA's dunk contest earlier that year with ball. his iconic East Bay dunk. But this night's incredible moment wouldn't be thanks to his tremendous leaping ability, but instead it was thanks to an unreal circus shot and a tremendous amount of luck. His teammate, Winston Garland, threw a horrible pass that required Ryder to save the ball from going out of bounds and what ensued was possibly the most unbelievable three-point basket in NBA history, which the game's commentators quickly declared as the play of the decade. For as long <laughs> as I live, I doubt I'll ever see a shot as lucky as this one. Number one, Vince Carter's dunk of death. It's one thing to jump clear over a defender while scoring a basket. Giannis has done that, LeBron James has done that, yes. and even Bill Russell did that back in the 60s but usually they were clearing players around six feet tall. It's another thing entirely to completely clear a seven foot two inch center on your way to a thunderous slam. That is what Vince Carter did against France in the 2000 Summer Olympics, as he absolutely immortalized the Frenchman Frederick Weiss for all the wrong reasons. When it comes to professional American basketball, none of us have ever seen anything quite like this in the heat of regular competition. And that's why I knew this was getting the number one spot the <laughs> instant I decided the topic of today's video. Here's my list of honorable mentions. Should any of these specific plays have made the top five instead? Are there any specific plays that I forgot to include on the honorable mentions list? I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. That was that was really cool. I like that. Because at first I was like, how is he going to do this? How is he going to, you know, boil all this down? But he set the parameters um, and the rules and the criteria to what you know, will deem a play unique and then went from there. And I was like, okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. I ain't got a problem. Like, I didn't know about the Rodgers thing. I didn't know about the um, the uh, the Ryder thing also. I do remember the Golden State Warriors and Portland Trailblazers game. I, I actually remember that one. I remember that indeed. And... Uh, the Steph Curry three-point. See, Kobe Bryant's three-point attempt was like an actual, like, 
I got to square up. I got to shoot this with the left hand. I felt like Steph Curry was, was more of a, uh, you know, yeah, entanglement situation and just kind of just, just kind of threw it up there. It wasn't like form. Like, I practice jumpers with my left hand. Let me show you what all my, you know, hard work has done. Now I'm in a situation where I have to shoot a jumper with my left hand from long range. This is the work I put in as opposed to let me just kind of get this thing up there and see if it goes in. I think that's the difference um, in that one. And uh, I actually thought Larry Bird's play was going to be on here. Now, I did notice that he did put it on the honorable mentions list. Um, but I definitely thought the Larry Bird play in the finals, the, the catching it in midair, the miss, left hand on the right side. I thought I definitely thought that was going to be on there. I would probably put that on my list, to be honest. I would have to. I might have to do one of these lists myself one of these days. My top five one-of-a-kind plays of all time. I didn't think nobody has, nobody has replicated Michael Jordan's spectacular move but not quite like his. Like, not with the, not, it never looked like, there's people that have done like somewhat similar things, but never like Michael. The full extension, hanging in the air, all the way down, all the way back up, you know, body under the basket, lay with the left, and not quite like that. And the thing about that Michael Jordan play is that he could have easily just finished it with the right hand. There was really no contest. He could have just dunked it. What kind of a flex is that? It's like, I could just easily do this with the right hand, dunk it, lay it up. But you know what? Just to flex on you, I'm going to make this more difficult and finish with the left, baby. But not only that, in that stretch, Michael Jordan had scored a buttload of points, consecutive points. He was on an unstoppable run right then and there. Hey, let me know what you think about it. What plays would you put on your top five list? Let me know. I would love to hear your opinion. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell. Stay notified. I catch you on the next one. We out, baby.